Okay, stop. Before you take another photo, we need to fix your camera settings because this is what happens when your camera isn't set up correctly. And I know this because these are my photos from when I first got started with photography over eight years ago. But these are my photos today, eight years later, and of course, with my camera set up correctly. So today I wanna to share with you my years of photography experience on how you should be setting up your camera to be able to take the best photos possible in just 11 minutes. Let's get started. All right, so before we dive in, you need to understand shooting modes, camera settings, and how they affect your shot. So let's first dive into shooting modes. We have a couple. We have got auto, which just sacrifices all of your control. You point at a subject or at a scene, you take a photo, and your camera handles all the settings. You don't have to lift a finger. Then we have a mode like shutter priority, for example, where you only control the shutter speed. Now, this is great for when you're shooting fast moving subjects because you can crank your shutter speed up and snap a really quick photo and freeze all the motion in your frame. Surprise, surprise, shutter speed controls how much motion blur is or isn't in your shot. A lower shutter speed is gonna mean more motion is gonna be in your shot because your shutter is gonna be open for longer and anything that moves while your shutter is open is going to appear as blurry in your shot, including you with your camera. So if your shutter is open for a long time and you press the shutter button and you move a little bit, your photo is gonna be coming out blurry. We then have aperture priority mode, and this allows you to control the aperture, which controls the depth of field and actually how sharp your photo may or may not come out in your image. This is the mode that I shoot in for about 85% of my shoots and I absolutely love it. Aperture is a set of blades inside of your lens that either open or close. The more open they are, the lower f-stop number you're going to see on the back of your screen. The more light is going to be let in to your shot as well, so the brighter your shot is going to be and the blurrier your background is going to be as well. And the opposite applies. So when your aperture rings are closed, sorry, when your aperture blades are closed, right, and it's a little bit tighter, your shot's gonna be darker, your background is going to be less blurry, which of course means more things in your frame are going to be in focus versus when you're shooting with a low aperture, less things in your frame are going to be in focus. And finally, the other main shooting mode we have is manual mode. This is where you control the shutter speed. This is where you control your aperture. And this is also where you control your ISO. Now your ISO is pretty much how sensitive your camera is going to be or is not going to be to light. And you set that on the back of your camera. A higher ISO means your camera is going to be more sensitive to light, giving you a brighter shot. And a lower ISO means that your camera is not as sensitive to light, giving you a darker shot. However, one huge caveat here is that when you start increasing your ISO like crazy, you start to get digital noise in your image, which is something you want to avoid pretty much at all costs. It doesn't look good, it creates some weird color stuff, makes things look muddy, makes things look not sharp. Overall, not ideal. My personal recommendation if I was just getting started with photography today would be to start shooting in aperture priority mode. This is where you're gonna get a really good feel for how your camera works, what settings are gonna affect different parts of your images, so on and so forth. However, even if you're shooting in aperture priority mode, if you don't have this one setting dialed in, you're gonna really struggle to get good results. See, when you're shooting in a mode like aperture priority mode, your camera still needs to decide how bright or how dark your image is going to be, and it does this through metering. And there are three main metering modes that I personally go through. We've got evaluative metering, which looks at your entire frame, and then your camera tries to decide what is the most balanced exposure for every single thing in your shot. We've then got spot metering, which takes where your focus point is and only meters that area of your frame. For example, this shot right here, my focus point is on me. So if I was using spot metering, my camera would make sure that I was perfectly exposed. But if the background was like super bright, it would just let it be super bright, super dark, whatever the case. And then we have center weighted metering, which is gonna look at the center of your shot and make sure things are pretty well overall balanced everywhere. It'll let some really bright areas be bright, let some really dark areas be dark, but overall it'll be taking the middle of your frame, working out the best exposure for that exact spot, setting it 
and then you'll be taking the photo. Personally, I use center weighted about 95% of the time. I'll change it if I need to, going between evaluative or spot. However, center weighted, I find I get the best results from. It also makes sure that my subjects stay accurately exposed, but doesn't ruin the rest of the shot at the same time, just like spot does sometimes. Now, metering is really important when you're shooting in auto, shutter priority or aperture priority. But when you're shooting in manual, it's purely just a guide because you've got to keep in mind, in manual mode, you're controlling all of your settings and the camera isn't trying to guess or evaluate or find the right exposure for your shot. That is your job. All right, now that exposure is out of the way, let's work on your file type. And by now, I hope you're shooting in RAW. There are two main file types that you're gonna be shooting in. You are gonna be shooting in RAW and you are gonna be shooting in JPEG and they're completely different from each other. A JPEG image, think of a JPEG image as an image that has already sort of got a little bit of an edit on it. It's compressed, it's smaller, and you have a lot less flexibility when it comes to editing it later a lot less. And then we've got a raw file, which is a complete sensor readout from your camera the moment it took the photo. It has all the information and data that you would ever wanna play around with when you're editing inside of a platform like Lightroom, for example, and it gives you so much flexibility, it is ridiculous. Now, there is a time and a place for both file types. If you need to take photos, deliver them quickly, and your client or whoever you're giving the photos to, doesn't really matter how the photo looks, or if you know you're never gonna edit these photos and you're only taking them to document whatever you're doing, shoot in JPEG, you'll be fine. If you wanna edit them, if you wanna make sure you have the most flexibility possible, if you wanna make your images look incredibly good, shoot in RAW and only in RAW. Believe me, it'll be a huge lifesaver down the track. All right, now that all of your files are set up, none of that matters unless your photos are in focus. So let's set up your focus mode. Focus modes are pretty self-explanatory and there are two that we are gonna cover. We've got autofocus one shot and then we've got autofocus continuous. It's called autofocus continuous on pretty much every single camera brand. Apart from Canon, it's called autofocus servo. So just keep that in mind. And they do exactly what they say they're gonna do unless you're shooting on Canon. What on earth is servo autofocus? Maybe I'm just the person that doesn't understand it. Either way. Autofocus one shot, you should be using this for when you and your subject aren't moving. Because what is gonna happen is when you have your camera in your hand and you half press down your shutter button, it's gonna find focus once, lock that focus point in, and then you take your shot. So if you're shooting a landscape photo on a tripod, for example, autofocus one shot is perfect. For pretty much every other instance where you and or your subject are moving, autofocus continuous is what you want. Because in this setting, when you half press your shutter button down, your camera is gonna find focus and then continually update it until you take the photo. And then even after you take the photo, if your shutter button is still half pressed down, it's gonna still be looking for focus and you can just continue firing away. And if your camera was made in the last like five years, it's probably gonna do a really good job at keeping your images in focus. I pretty much always keep my autofocus mode in autofocus continuous, unless I'm taking long exposures or time lapses on a tripod of a non-moving subject. Now that we've got our focus mode dialed in, let's work on how many photos you're taking per second or per shutter button press. The drive mode on your camera is gonna allow you to choose how many photos you're taking in a certain amount of time. For example, you have a handful of drive modes to choose from and keep in mind that every single camera is going to have a limitation here. Some cameras can shoot 30 photos a second, others can only shoot four photos a second. So every camera is gonna be different here. But you have got like a couple of main drive modes to go through. You've got one shot drive mode, which is going to allow you to hold your shutter button down, take a photo, and then it's gonna instantly give you a preview. But if you hold your shutter button down, you're not gonna be taking multiple photos. You'll then have to refocus your shot, take another one, and the cycle repeats. You've then also got continuous modes, usually in low, medium, and high, and this is self-explanatory. Again, if you're in a low continuous mode, your shots might come out like 
but you'll just be able to hold your shutter button down and take multiple images. Medium is gonna be faster and high is gonna be even faster after that. I never really change my drive mode unless I'm shooting some high moving sports action kind of thing, which is quite rare. So I always have my drive mode on low continuous. All right, the last thing I wanna walk you through is making sure you turn on your grid lines and level. Turning on the three by three grid lines is going to make composing your shots way easier, way better, and you'll be coming home with much nicer looking images and turning the level on on your camera is going to make sure that your horizons don't look like this okay you want to make sure you're taking straight images this way your images will be less distracting they'll look way more professional way cleaner way more dialed in and overall it's just better to have straight images. And there we go. You now know how to set your camera up to make sure you're taking the best photos possible, but there is still so much more to the photography process and the photo editing process that goes into getting great shots. So if you wanna learn more about photo and photo editing, you can check this video out right here and I'll see you over there.